Hi, everybody. Um, so today I'm going to talk um, about tidy data and uh, my experience with data in general. Um, I'm really happy to be here, uh, surrounded by all these awesome uh, speakers. And yeah, so the subtitle of my talk is actually, uh, it's debatable, but I just wanted to show off like the bit that I've been doing during pandemic times. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, I like to bake bread, as you can guess. Um, I studied neuroscience in my bachelor's and then uh, computational neuroscience for my master's. And by the time when I was writing my um, master's thesis, I also work as a data consultant in the Shetty University of Berlin. And I'm currently working as a developer and data scientist in, at ThoughtWorks uh, Germany here in Hamburg. Uh, so you can find me in social media also over there. Uh, so as I said today, I want to talk about my experience with data and in particular what I was doing when I was doing uh, data consultation. Uh, so one of my main, my one of my tasks back then was to do analysis of satisf satisfaction surveys um, of alumni of the university. Uh, so basically, the people over there wanted to know uh, how well were the, the, ver uh, the various programs preparing the students for their work life. So we had like questions of how do you, how did you like the program? Like, would you recommend it? Strongly, strongly disagree or strongly agree? And also some some parts like checkboxes that look very into what was like the syllabus, uh, uh, if the syllabus was preparing you from like the skills that you needed in your current position. So something like like that. What are the skills that you need right now? Um, so. I soon realized that because we had like very different surveys for different years or different programs that uh, I had to do some data wrangling. I had to do some data wrangling with these surveys. So I started kind of like trying to extract the information out of these questions. And basically I figure out that first we needed to identify the variables uh, and kind of like put these ones in columns. Uh, I also needed to record each observation per row. So for example, over here in the red case, you can see, you see only one observation that it's spread uh, in like three columns and more than 10 rows because this data was created basically through the questions, like from the point of view of writing questions, not from the point of view of extracting data or analyzing the data. And also another thing is that I needed like certain identifier keys for each observation. So something like that turned into uh, an ID column, then was the transition between your studies to your job successful? This is a Boolean. What are the general skills uh, that you currently use in your in your job? This is like from the checkboxes that we saw. And was the training provided from your program in the university, re a, particularly to this skill, a Boolean again? Um, then is when I realized that the more service that I analyze, I ended up like, no matter how the, the raw data came, I ended up with a very similar structure as the one over here in green, which transmitted information more, me information more meaningfully. So I did some research and I discovered tidy data. Basically, uh, this is the quote, Tidy data sets are all alike, but every messy data set is messy in its own way. So it was not a coincidence that I was ending up in a like more familiar structure that is somehow standardized. And actually people uh, study it and write articles about this structure. So what is tidy data actually? You can think of it as like a map, just like a way of represent the meaning of your data set in your, into a standard structure. It follows three principles. Each variable needs to be in a column. 
each observation is a row and each type of observational unit is a, forms a table. So you can have different tables if you're observing different units. Also, a, for the people who like theory, this is uh, also known as a Cod's third normal form. And there are different, the, the, there's the second and the fourth, like different various forms, but this is the one that um, can get us the statistics um, easier from our data. So up until now, it's my experience, but now I wanna convince you more about this study data thing. So let's go and look into a use case. Say that we have a distance matrix, for example, between uh, the distance between German cities. Uh, in kilometers, we've seen it, right? Um, more or less, like we, we know this representation of a data set. The problem over here is that it's not very easy to add new observations. We somehow need to fill all the, either the lower a, a triangular matrix or the upper triangular matrix. And we also are like mirroring our number of observations. So we s seems that we have more than we actually do. And besides of like visualizing in a heat map, there's not that many things that we can do with this. So now let me show you this other one. Basically, uh, the, the tidy version of a distance matrix. We can identify three variables. The start, this, uh, the city of uh, where you start, the city uh, where you end, and the distance between these two cities. Over here, we can already see that this is related to a trip. Um, and actually that it represents uh, observations in the row column very easily. So the the one on the right gives us information more meaningfully and more immediate and the one on the left, it's useful, but it has certain constraints. Not only that, with the one on the right, we can like do statistical operations and obtain like the median, the maximum, the minimum, the mean of our variable distance. Or if, for example, if you wanna add another variable duration, we can also put it over there. We could also filter by certain conditions or stratify our data according to certain groups. And also we can visualize the data. Um, over here, you can actually see with a scatter plot of our data frame that uh, the distance matrix is actually only one way of visualizing all our data set. Uh, so it's not all of the power. So how can we achieve this tidy data? For starters, we can write a bunch of nested for loops and conditionals and basically go through all our data set and just like say, like if this is a variable, then add it to the columns. If this is a, an observation, then add it to the row. Uh, and this is already very good. I mean, it might not be the most elegant way or the most efficient, but we are already thinking in tidy data. We already know like what's a more meaningful way to represent our data. Uh, but maybe if you need to do this a lot of times or every day with different surveys, and then you need to write different for loops, at some point you would like to upskill and become a little bit fancier. And for that reason, Pandas has your back with different functions. So we don't have time to go through all of them, but like if you want, I recommend you to check this a, a pandas cheat sheet for data wrangling. And the most a, important functions or operations that we need are melt and pivot to stack and unstack columns, concat and merge and joins that allow us to basically combine different data frames. So I hope by now that you are more or less convinced that tidy data is like not only nice, but also like it really makes our lives easier and it saves us time and effort. It converts the like data cleaning, which is normally regarded as like the not so fun part of data and analysis. It makes it really smooth um, and enjoyable and it also unlocks analysis and visualization powers that we didn't know before. So basically with this, I hope to like inspire a lot of people to just go 
around and become data scientists for the like their spare time or just like for their job even it's great i would just like to like give uh, a reminder over here that with great power comes great responsibility and my ask for you is to try to do data science for social good there are many many like problems right now in the world and we need more ways of extracting information from the data that we see every day uh, particularly to me in this uh, international women's day um, i'm going to use the talk as uh, an accountability and a call for action for myself uh, because um, they are very uh, they are very rough statistics out there and it seems that we haven't completely understood them. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about statistics like this related to violence against women. In my home country, 10 women are murdered each day. And I don't know what is it that we need to understand this horrible data, but just for a little bit of uh, comparison, there are other statistics like in the UK, 13 women are murdered, but each month. So until we cannot change policies or work with NGOs and different organizations, try to understand more what's happening, visualize it, basically try to change the world so that women can stop being murdered and fulfill their dreams, I think that we should keep working. So thanks everybody for listening. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the end of the talks too and have a happy uh, International Women's Day. Uh, yeah, thank you for your talk. Really, um, am I on mute? No, I'm not on mute. Yeah, uh, really inspiring, especially, um, yeah, I didn't know about uh, the st this statistics. Um, I had a question from before the statistics. Now I'm a bit, um, it's overshadowed my question. I wanted to ask you how long did it uh, take you to become good at uh, making tidy data? Uh, that's a good question. I think that is something that comes and goes, like practice, like if the more I practice, the more comfortable I become, but sometimes I stop like my pet projects or like I stop working on Python and I forget a little bit and then I come back. Uh, I work for in on these for over eight months and I think like by the end I was feeling very comfortable and I was like looking at data sets and saying like, oh, like you just need to do like melt here or something like that and then now currently at my job also like sometimes i discover different data sets and it's kind of like oh yeah you could do this and that and that but i would say like yeah like three months six months it varies like some people are very like thank you into it yeah of course i just yeah because i think uh well clean data is kind of hard to get and we are used Definitely. to learning on clean data and then the reality strikes. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, if anybody from the audience has any questions, now is the moment to message from Carol. And uh, now is the moment to ask. And otherwise we um, move on, I think. Thank you for uh, coming and uh, yeah, so let's see what's up.